Blah freaking blah. What's going on, guys? It's Eric Blah freaking blah. Thank you for joining me. I hope you guys have been enjoying all of the San Diego Comic Con reveals and news and such. I know I have um, seen the awesome Thor trailer. Um, did not possibly think I could be more excited about that movie after watching the first trailer. Did not think they could possibly top that first trailer. Boy, I was wrong on both counts. I cannot wait to see that movie. Uh, Justice League looks like it's holding promise. Uh, it's kind of funny how they've lightened that thing up a little bit. And if you go online, and in, 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 well, you're probably already online watching this, but if you do a search for uh, uh, trailer comparisons, you can see how in the original trailer and the second trailer, they're showing some of the same scenes, but they've lightened the pictures up and, like, uh, zoomed out and notice they very strategically put wonder woman at the forefront of this trailer <laughs> just, that was a good move warner brothers well, that's well played um but that's not what i want to talk about today i want to get to that stuff this week uh there's quite a bit that i'd like to talk to you guys with about uh but i was kind of taking you know sundays i usually take the day off uh, don't really do anything but this i had this keep going through my head that i, I had a uh, when we were talking early in an earlier video about um saving the comic book industry <clears throat> and uh one of the recommendations that i have constantly put out is we need newsprint back on the stands we need comic books in the grocery stores in the pharmacies uh in the bookstores everywhere you know we need it i mean at the library you know stuff like that i need them available at, a, at a, an affordable inviting price point four dollars is an alienating cost a buck fifty is a very welcoming cost that is there's not a lot of risk to giving something a try um and somebody commented that uh that wouldn't that hurt the comic book stores when it put them out of business and I'm, i apologize for never getting a chance to respond back to that um i meant to for a couple of days and then i just thought of it today uh i i know that i said i wouldn't be commenting i know you you guys probably saw me fire up last night uh commenting again uh, it it's possible that YouTube is like tramping my videos down when I'm commenting, but it was, I couldn't quite discern whether or not it was, I, I could see changes in the uh, recommendations of the video, but it wasn't provable. So I said, hell with it. I want to, I want to chat with you guys in the forum. So I just, I'm just going to go for broke and see what happens. So I'll be back commenting when I have time for you guys. But on this subject, I, um, got too busy and kind of kind of lost track with it and then remembered it and I, I felt like it was worth its own video so I decided to sit down today and uh, shoot this one out for you guys real quick before we get back to the regular scheduled program um, so here's how it works and this is the reason why comic book stores are not in danger of newsprint being prevalent um, because the way it starts is you have newsprint versions and you have direct market versions. Now, the direct market versions will be the full price versions. They'd be the nicer paper, colors, all that good jazz. Um, and the newsprint versions will be, obviously, newsprint, newsstand versions, I mean. Uh, and they would be the lesser quality, but they would be the lesser price. And they would be available everywhere, not comic stores. And you would have, and when you had this, see, this is the way it was in the past. You know, in the, the 80s, the 90s, even going into the 2000s, but by then it had really dropped off. Um, which if you can look, if you look in the, uh, in the early nineties, I have not looked up the metrics, uh, the actual hard numbers, but in the early nineties, the comic book stores were really enjoying a heyday. Um, I mean, things were big, things were good and how it works is newsstand editions kind of work as the, forgive me for lack of a better way of putting this, but the gateway drug, they're what gets you started. Let's say you go see, you know, like somebody, somebody goes see Spider-Man Homecoming. That's just the latest example. And they're like, man, that was, and like, it really took them in. Like, they really enjoyed it, and it fired them up on Spider-Man. And they go to the grocery store to pick up milk and eggs. Because we all go to the grocery store all the time. And, and they walk by the newsstand or the magazine rack, and they see a copy of Amazing Spider-Man. And it's a buck fifty. Or their or, or a parent goes with their kid, and the kid sees the comic book. Hey, 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 there's Spider-Man. Ah, yeah. yeah, throw it in the buggy real quick. And if that book is good, and with Marvel, it's a pretty big if nowadays, but if that book is good, if the kid enjoys it, he'll go back. And 
this routine kind of picks up. Like, you know, if you really get sucked into one title, well, you start branching out. You start saying, well, what about this title? Well, what about this title? I mean, the Thor Ragnarok trailer is absolutely killing it. And so <clears throat> interest, of course, in Thor is picking up. It's marketed right there in front of us. So, you know, is Thor there on the shelf by Spider-Man? Well, if it is, chances are the fan, the kid, the adult, a buck fifty. Hey, I want to try that. You know, the Justice League trailer's out. Hey, and you see that Justice League book for buck fifty, two dollars maybe. Well, let's try that. I mean, that you know that that trailer's firing some people up. It looks it looks good. It looks entertaining. It's a whole different type of style comic book film, and it's very much more. You know, it's how do you say it? It's more rock and roll. I mean, my my oldest son was like, it looks like a video game. And I've heard that complaint before, but to me, that's more of a testament of how far video games have come and not a detriment to the film. Does that make sense? I, I, I've heard that complaint a lot, and I'm like, you know, computer graphics are computer graphics, and the better games get, then the more that the movies and the games uh, stylistically, visually, are going to start meeting. I mean, hell, the, the motion capture thing, uh, I want to say that even came from video games. Like, that, that was a video game advancement that got applied to cinema. So... All in all, you start with the newsstand. I mean, this is how I started. I mean, this is, a, this is a personal testimony, but I've seen it a lot of people, and it's just basically how this works. Is you have to get people started somewhere, and you give them access, easy access, and you give them a good price point, and you, um, you rope them in. And after you rope them in, and they start expanding out and branching out and taking risks with new stories, new characters, new titles... Well, eventually they're gonna they're they're gonna become a more and more hardcore collector to the point that they'll say, well, what about and they'll step foot in comic shops because they want to see what they can get for back issues. They want to see what recommendations they can find. Um, they want to see the new books, and they might even be taken in by the higher quality versions uh, that are officially more rare, quote unquote. Uh, because they're only available in direct markets, all the, which is the comic stores. And then they very possibly might start buying there. You know, the selection's obviously going to be much bigger. And, you know, suddenly you've got a lifelong fan. So this is, this is why it's important. And the comic shops will reap the benefits of this. Because you are drawing in people that wouldn't have stepped foot in there anyway. Now, you know, say the people, they're satisfied with that one or two titles they're getting off the newsstand and they never step foot in the comic store. Well, chances are those people wouldn't have stepped foot in the comic store ever at all anyway. So you're not losing anything. But what you are doing is you're constantly fishing, fishing for a new audience, fishing for people and to, to bring them in to what we've known all this time is quite outstanding. You know, sharing that with them. And then they meet people. They become part of the community there, and they start going back and forth on what they've read that was amazing, what they read that sucked, and they start going back and forth. They get in nice arguments with people. You know, the give and take, it's quite outstanding. Um, it's a lot of fun, and I encourage people to um, try books from all publishers. You know, like, like I always say, I'm not pro-Marvel or pro-DC. I'm pro-good story, you know. Um, I don't think I, – I think you do yourself a disservice by cutting off any wing – you know, or any potential place that a good story could come from, because you're just going to miss out on the good stories. I mean, I can say that for myself personally. <laughs> Growing up reading Marvel and not really being attracted to DC all that much, I could see how I, uh, you know, I missed a lot of the good stories uh, from the late '80s, early '90s, especially from DC. Now, I did read some on occasion, um, but I did miss a lot. Uh, anyway, that's my two cents on that. I, I hope that I hope that that. Um, makes it more clear uh, and how it's a really a good thing to return newsprint to the forefront to get these uh, inexpensive copies on the shelves to try to draw new people in. And I realize this may be incomplete, and if you guys have thoughts to this, please let me know. I mean, where did you get your first comic book? Was it, <clears throat> you know, for, I, for some of you guys that are younger, uh, younger than me, you know, you might have grown up and there wasn't comic books on the newsstand by this point. You know, so you, you just, you had other ways, like you would watch a movie and go to a comic shop. <clears throat> but I think, I think for a lot of people that you, you're, you know, uh, especially older guys, you're going to be like I was, you, you discovered comics on the newsstand and that 
drew you in to the comic stores. And it would strengthen the industry. It would strengthen the comic stores. I mean, the publishers and the comic stores alike would both benefit from new, from more and more newer fans coming in saying, what can I get? So, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, let me know if this was a good explanation, if this helped you understand why this is a very important thing that the industry needs to embrace, or if I just completely dropped an egg and nobody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, post your comments down below. Uh, let me know, and... Uh, I'll get back to you guys this week with more videos and maybe a full-length podcast for a change. But um, Until then, guys, it's always great talking with you, and I'll see you on the next one.